Welcome to Intro to C Programming. Today's topic is on pointers to functions. Now, uh, before we jump into this, I have to let you know that pointers to functions is going to be a difficult topic. It's going to be one that you might need to watch this video more than once, read the book, uh, find some other references also. It's just not easy to really conceptualize that we have pointers to functions, uh, as I will explain today. So, uh, okay, just a review of pointers. Take a look at this code that I have here on the slide. Um, line one, I create a pointer to a character. Line two, I create a character uh, and assign it a value of J. Line three, I have my pointer pointing at the address. I uh, get the address of CH. And here I say assume the address of CH is 7504. On line four, I print out the character uh, CH, which is going to be a J. On line five, I print out the character, which is the dereference value of CH pointer. So it is going to go to that address, it's going to get 7504 out, it goes to 7504, grabs the value out of it, and in this case it's going to be J. On line 6 it prints out whatever is stored in CH pointer, in this case it's the address of CH, and as I've said it's 7504. On line 7 I print out the address of CH, which is also 7504, and on line 8 I don't know what this is going to print out. It's the address of CH pointer. All that I do know is it will not be 7504. Okay, hopefully this is just a review. We've covered a similar slide to this in the last few lectures, so hopefully this makes sense to you now, and you could have answered all of those questions before we went through them. Okay, now we're going to talk about function pointers. Now, just as we talked about in our last lecture that an array is nothing more than a pointer. It's a special pointer though, uh, because it points to the first element inside of the array and then we can use pointer arithmetic to iterate through other elements of the array. So an array is nothing more than a special pointer. Well, as it turns out, a function is nothing more than a special pointer also. What it points to is the location and memory that holds the first line of code inside of that function's implementation. So when we have a function, we have a body to the function, which is what the function is actually going to do. The name of the function is actually a pointer that points to the location and memory where the body of that function resides. What we're able to do then is we're able to utilize functions as pointers and do some do anything we want with a, with uh, the name of the function just as we're able to do with a pointer. So what we're going to do in today's lecture is we're going to pass in uh, a function pointer as a parameter to another function. Okay, so let's assume that we have a function called func1 and it is going to take a function as the second parameter to this function. And let's say that it's either going to be func2 or func3 that it takes as that second parameter. So when we write our function prototypes, we write them out exactly the same way as we've done before. You see that there's one difference. The second parameter of func1 is going to be a pointer to a function. Now, what defines a function? We've talked about function signatures uh, in the past when we learned functions. What defines a function is the return type, the name of the function, and the parameter list. Well, in this case, I have the return type of the function I'm passing in is going to be an int. I'm saying that it's going to be a pointer, and remember, in functions, uh, in function prototypes, we don't have to specify the name of the variable, so I don't have the name of it there, but otherwise I would have the name there. Then I have the parentheses around this. This is going to be the, uh, uh, the function parameters for the function that I'm passing into this function. This is just the syntax of it to put the parentheses around the star. So this, what this denotes here as the second parameter is this is a pointer to a function that returns an int and takes an int and a float. And this is the second parameter to the func1 function. The first parameter is a float variable. Okay. Now, so that means that any function that I want to pass in here as the second parameter to this function has to return an integer and take an integer and a float as parameters to the function. You see here now, I have two candidates for that, func2 and func3, both return ints. They take ints and floats as parameters. Okay, when we call func1, we have to pass in a float as the first parameter and then a pointer to a function as the second parameter. And that function has to return an int, take an int, and take a float as parameters. So you see here now that 
I call func1, I pass a float in as the first parameter. As the second parameter, I'm passing a function in that takes an int and a float as parameters and returns an int back to me. I just saw my prototype on the previous slide that func2 and func3 both work uh, to do that for me. Now here is what is inside of func1. So here is the implementation of func1. You see that I have my float variable. I've named it number now in my implementation. Now here is passing my function as the second parameter. It, it returns an integer. Inside the parentheses, we put that star saying that this is a pointer to a function that's being passed in. We then put the name of the function. This is the local name of the function, though. It doesn't have to be func1 or func2. In fact, it should not be func1 or func2. The scope of this function, my func, is only inside of these curly braces. It's only inside of the func1 function because this is now considered a variable inside of func1. That function has to take an int and a float as a parameter. I could have given variable names here if I wanted to. I didn't have to, but I could have given them there if I wanted to. Uh, I'm never using them inside of this function here, func1, so I didn't need to provide them here. What I needed to provide was a name to the pointer of the function, which is being passed in as a parameter. Though. When I call that function now, I call it as my func, that's the name of it here, passing in an integer and a float. And I've done that. My num is an integer I've declared right here. Number is a float that I passed in right here. So I've called this function my func. It takes an integer and a float as a parameter. It returns an integer back to me. I've gotten that return value. Obviously, this is just a sample for you so you can see how to call it. I'm not using this return value, but there's probably there would probably be more lines of code inside of this here. So this is how I pass a function in as a parameter to another function. Uh, this allows me to have more flexibility on what my function is going to do because I don't actually know what function is going to be called until runtime. Most of the time, everything else that we've done, you've known what function was going to get called at compile time. Now, I don't know what function is going to get called until I run my program. And we're going to write a program that utilizes this today. Again, I understand that this is a difficult topic, and I'm expecting you to take some time to go and uh, look up some resources outside of this lecture and to uh, possibly look through the book, read some sections there as well. Um, this is kind of a short lecture, so I'm expecting you to do a little bit of work on your own so that you fully understand how to pass functions into pointers. Make sure that you watch the lecture and follow along uh, with the program that I'm going to write uh, for how to do this as well. Okay, if you have any questions, let me know. Good luck.